cliffcentral.com. All right. Uh, happiness was fun, huh? Isn't she great? I just love people great. who yeah. – she, she is her name. And this is why you've got to be careful yeah. what you call your kids because if you don't give them a nice name that's positive and in her case optimistic and fun and you call them something shit, you're condemning them, right? You're condemning them to being like a walking misery their whole life long. If you call someone happy, this is a very high chance that they will actually be happy because as she said, she introduces herself. And people go, oh, your name's happiness, and they smile immediately. And that's a better way to meet someone than, oh, my name is um, inconsequential. Equiminius. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Equiminius. Uh, or, or shitty attitudinous. You know all those names that in, in the Asterix books, they always used to come up with these. Um, uh, there was one, my, my favorite name from Asterix was one of the Roman centurions, and he was, sorry, one of the Gaulish uh, chiefs, and his name was, over optimistics. <laughs> I always like that. I think if I have a have a kid, I'll call them over optimistics, and then when people meet them, they'll go, "Oh, <laughs> we know you. You're you're unrealistic and over optimistic. That's great. No, All right, very good, uh, very very good. I do like the name Happiness, and I like her too. So she's listening to us from Australia this morning. And uh, if you're anywhere interesting in the world, and you want to tell us about your experience in your life, I want to hear about it. We want to meet you, kind of get to know the people who are a part of our little community every morning, and um, and in that way also introduce you to everybody else. You know, be fun to get to know everybody. Lots of rain. I woke up with rain and I woke up with load shedding this morning. So it's it's not the greatest way to wake up. I'm hoping that it all comes on a little bit later so I can actually get stuff done. Otherwise, I'm going to have one of those days where I just decide, all right, fine, everything's conspired against me today, so I'm just going to have to be lazy. I'll walk around, uh, do the basics, and otherwise get some like afternoon nap in later today. That's a good plan, right? Yes. That's what yes. I think I'll do. Yeah, get that going. Get a nap going. Right. Um, are you shop at the beginning of the week for the whole week person? No. You don't strike me as that. Do you? No. Are you, are you um, the guy that goes to the shop every two days? I go to the shop as seldom as I can. I go when the milk goes sour or when I need to buy new veggies. That's it. I do You're not such like a practice. I do not like You one of the most- I do not like the shops. No, I do not, Sam I am. I do not like them. You, even your I now see why your dreams are so practical. Mm. Everything you do is so wait for the milk to go off. Yeah. So I've got a That's I've got unreal. a thing of milk in my fridge now and it's going to last until the eighth of February. So what is that? That's uh, it's four, four days, days. Four days time. So it'll be Tuesday next week that I'll have to go to the shops again. So I'll do that. I've got to go into the office next Tuesday. So I'll just do it all in one trip. Then I don't even have to leave home. Especially, I can just do it on my way back from the office, and I'll buy the milk and all the base and bread. Like once you you know once you've realized the bread is no good, that's probably another time you have to go to the shops because I don't I don't eat a lot of bread, but I like a little bit of like egg on toast in the morning or something. So that's the whole plan. Mm. Um, but gotcha. I also, I, I do, I do lists. I, I've never understood people who just walk through the shop and like look around. Uh, maybe I'll have Scum. that. Maybe I won't. Maybe I'll get some of those. Maybe I won't. That's bullshit. Scum. Go in they with scummy, the, bad people. Go with a list. About. Go with a list. Buy only what's on the where's list. Your, Don't waste your money. Creativity and like inspiration. Um, oh, I mean, please. Those, those, those shops have been designed specifically to inspire you creativity and to, and to think, let me cook this up you yeah know, yesterday let me... let me tell you what happened yesterday i had an appointment at one o'clock right so i left at half past 11 popped in at a because i need to i haven't bought new clothes in oh god three years maybe yeah. so i needed to buy some like, t- basic stuff t-shirts and shit you know like it's summer so shorts and things like that so I um I thought, all right, well, this is the shop I'm going to. So I, I knew exactly which parking at, at this mall that I had to go to. Parked right at the entrance because I know it's the there's no one else at that time and it's very quiet at that parking area. You go right to the top of the roof. You go in. The shop entrance is literally across the way from the entrance to the mall. Walked in. It, it took me, I promise, I would be lying if I if it took me more than ten minutes to walk around the shop, get the three pairs of shorts and the four t shirts that I needed. Then I'm lined up at the 
at the teller. There's only one open, so I'm a little bit annoyed because I'm thinking I've got my appointment at one and I want to limit the amount of wasted time, right? So now I've got 10 minutes on the clock and then suddenly, boom, the power goes out. They had load shedding at the shopping mall. So then you have to wait for all their systems to reboot and everything else. But it didn't, it didn't take that long. Got it paid, walked out to the car, paid my parking, obviously, because, you know, even if you spend 15 minutes in these shopping malls, these fucking vampires, they want to take some money off of you. Cost me 10 rand to park there for 15 minutes. It's criminal. It's absolutely criminal that these shopping malls are still doing that when they're also charging the people in the mall rent and you're going there to spend your money already. Now you must also pay for parking. Uh, the, the fact that we pay for shopping uh, malls parking in this country is just outrageous. Anyway, fact is I get into the car. It's taken me maybe 15 minutes altogether. And then I drive out of there and I'm like, yes, I have won at this. Because I had a very particular list of things. I wasn't going there to look at like what kinds of clothes were available and to see whether or not, you know, to try things on. Oh, no, I know my sizes. I know, you know, this is the, 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 the waist size. This is the T-shirt size. I got it sorted. 15 minutes, Leanne. I was so proud of myself. And then you, you get to the car and you like have this feeling of satisfaction. Made my one o'clock appointment with, I think I was 10 minutes early. And then, you know, you, you get shit done. You tick these things off your list. It was awesome. It was great. Yeah, look, look don't, don't peg me for the person who, who browses and spends hours in a mall, please. Mm-hmm. Um, I just think I'm somewhere in between where, yes, I may have a list of things in my mind that I need to get, <clears throat> but I will be inspired and think, you know what I haven't had for a long time is tzatziki, and I feel like a bit of a Greek platter today, mm-hmm. you know. Um, but, yeah, I'm, I certainly, oh, especially for clothes, I don't, well, I don't I don't dilly-dally. Yeah. No, no. You've got to get your shit done. I know Mbulelo is one of those people. You definitely have lists. Uh, Jared says he goes to the shops every day. I plan for dinner in the morning and I buy in the afternoon. Ugh. But then Jared. Wow. No, Jared is in Canada. So. Yeah. You know. But still. Probably probably walked to the shop down the road. It's easy. And it's freezing now. I don't don't know how my man is doing that. It's minus. (laughs) Okay. So I've got friends who live in Calgary and I've got friends who live in (laughs) Vancouver. So I use this weather app, and I just occasionally check in to see, you know, what's going on over there. Let's see what it's looking like in in Calgary. So I'm I'm just looking for – Vancouver is 5 degrees today, so that's just beautiful, and it's cloudy. Calgary, minus 16. Ooh. Minus 16. Excluding wind chill, I'm sure. So call that minus 30 yeah, okay, in, so in reality. Real feel will probably be about minus 30 with wind chill. Yeah. It's there ridiculous. Can it Feel, be- no, no. Feels like here it is. Feels like minus twenty four because the wind chills me. Yeah. Feels like yeah, minus always- twenty. <laughs> minus twenty four. Are you? Are you kidding me? Minus twenty four. And you must know in Canada, um, that's like we're going out summer weather because when you're in the city, you, you're kind of trapped. Once you start to head up in Canada, it's minus 24 to start. Dry bulb, I think they call that temperature. <laughs> and then you're starting to talk minus 35, minus 40. Real feel. Ah, uh, these Canadians. So, uh, crazy. These, these friends of mine who live in Canada, they always like, oh, please. Everyone always just talks about how cold Canada is. That, is that all you know about Canada? That's all you need to know if it feels like, <laughs> sorry, if it feels like minus 25, that's not an argument. It's like saying, oh, she's only a heroin addict. Is, yeah. is that all no. you want to know about her? Know that's about her. Turn you <laughs> off. She, she shoots up with heroin every week. Yeah. Now, what about her other traits? You know, the fact that she's an artist and uh, can do headstands. Hey, speaking of artists, I have to bring this up because it's been the big story of entertainment this week is all these people who are like quitting Spotify because of Joe Rogan, you know, and Joe Rogan's such a problem. So <clears throat> let's just see who these people are. Um, because now Barbara Streisand, I mean, like we needed to hear from that old witch. Barbara Streisand oh has just said she's going to leave Spotify. And I'm like, well, bye-bye. Well, that changes everything. <laughs> yeah, bye-bye. If anything, that makes me want Spotify more. If you can guarantee me no Barbara Streisand songs will pop up. <laughs> I mean, fuck. In fact, I, I would, that is a, a unique selling point now. If, if I know 
that I can press shuffle on Spotify and Barbara Streisand won't come up. That to me is a massive, massive win. So go, go, Bob, go. Anyway, I love the way that they, they all leave, leave Spotify because Rogan supposedly was putting out misinformation, disinformation, because both words are interchangeable to me. But, you know, we, we're not talking about the World Health Organization who've pretty much been putting out mixed messages from the get-go. No one's trying to ban them anywhere for mis- or disinformation. These, these artists, Neil Young and jo- what, Joni Mitchell, Barbara Streisand, People, these are people my grandparents wouldn't have listened to. They're so old. Anyway, um, they're okay though. All all of these people are have been perfectly okay with sharing that platform with Chris Brown, who you know, you know, he he beat beats women. R. Kelly, who is a sex trafficker and a child molester. Um, Marilyn Manson, who's been convicted of sexual assault. Uh, John Lennon, who who was convicted during his lifetime of domestic assault. Um, and there's so many more. You name them, right? All these artists, they're, they're okay with sharing the platform with murderers and domestic abusers and, 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 and people who, who assault their wives and their girlfriends. They're okay with that. But they have a problem with mis- and disinformation. Do me a favor. I don't take any of you guys seriously. Fuck off. No one is waiting for you to moralize about what should and shouldn't be on Spotify. Unbelievable. Absolutely. But is that all? So, sorry, Leah, you were going to say. No, absolutely. Uh, uh, again, for me, I don't listen to an artist because of who they are and their background and what they do in their personal lives. Yeah. I really don't care. But, but is our only option, to your point, Leah, is our only option now is I absolutely agree with everything you say mm-hmm. or... I have to shoot you with a gun in your face so that you're not alive anymore. Is there nothing in between? No. You know, you nothing would have thought it's been said the height but, of civilization is to disagree on a position but not kill the okay, other man, but, but, uh, right? Is Can we not? No, like, we, okay, we Leanne doesn't agree with me on Kale. So, so I'm not going to run her over in the street. No, well, this is it, um, Bulen. I'm sorry to be the one to, to break this to you. But, you know, now Whoopi Goldberg has been suspended for two weeks by The View because she made um, – that stupid, stupid comment about how the Holocaust wasn't about racism because she sees it as just like two groups of white people. That's what she said. Her words were, you white people just figure it out among yourselves, the Holocaust, fucking Holocaust, and she has the cheek to say that. She's like, no, you white white people just figure out among yourselves. Like the Jews and Nazis were just like, you know, it's intra-racial stuff that. Hitler wrote in Mein Kampf, that the Jews were an inferior race. He saw them as an inferior race. What, what, what Whoopi was saying is basically everyone else is racist, but Hitler, nah, not a racist. That's what she was saying. Stupid idiot. Because, because black people weren't involved. Well, yes. I mean, you know, if you're going to Whoopi Goldberg and the ladies on The View for guidance on history, you're in big trouble. I then... You're in as much trouble as if you're looking to moralize with people of Spotify who are canceling or trying to cancel Joe Rogan. You're in a you're in a world of trouble. If your best source for history is those yentas on the view, good God. I mean, you just walk up to someone in a that's like the the, the news outlets that go up to these homeless people, these these mentally ill homeless people who are peeing on the steps of the court and they're like what do you think of the latest finding in the court? And they're like, yeah, that's the guy we're going to take our cue from. And they put him on the news. You know, that's what it's like. Unbelievable. And now Harry and Meghan are involved. This is what I love. Harry and Meghan have jumped on this uh, Rogan thing. And they're going, well, if, you know, if, if Joe Rogan is allowed to continue to spread disinformation and misinformation, what, you mean like the, like the disinformation that Kamala Harris and Joe Biden were saying when – Trump was busy developing the vaccine with all the pharmaceutical companies in Operation Warp Speed. And Kamala and Joe both said, I don't know if I'll take this, uh, this vaccine, especially if it comes from a Trump administration. Why didn't you cancel them then? Because it's all politics. We can see through you guys. It's bull. From top to bottom, this is nonsense. Carl says, is Whoopi Goldberg a Jew? No. Her real name is Karen, by the way. Karen. Whoopi Goldberg's name is Karen. That explains a lot. <laughs> Karen Johnson, and she chose 
Goldberg because she thought it was funny. Do you know, you know where Whoopi comes from? She Her real stage name used to be Whoopi Cushion. Like the, fart, oh, okay. the farting thing that goes... That's where yeah, we, she does live farts now, so she doesn't need to be called right, Whoopi Cushion. Well, look at the size of her. They could be devastating. Nonetheless. Now, what happened there with Whoopi? Did she just like... I don't know, dude. Maybe I Robin mean, Williams. Maybe fast. Robin Williams' suicide hit her really hard or something, and she started eating. I don't know. She's just a mess. But, but I love I love the fact that you know the people who made up this rule that if we disagree with you on something, like you were saying, Bolelo, if we don't agree with you on everything, that you must be cancelled. Those same people don't want to be cancelled themselves when they step out of line. Like now, apparently, Whoopi's really upset that they're suspending her for two weeks, and she's thinking of quitting The View anyway. Well. Go ahead. But we're going to apply the same rule that we applied to Roseanne Barr, for example. Remember Roseanne was fired from that TV show she just started doing. Um, it mm-hmm. was like a remake of her, her old sitcom. And she was fired because she made some comment about a woman called Valerie Plame, I think. Or Valerie uh, – it was some Obama staffer, and she made a comment about it, like she's not even that black or whatever. And that got her fired instantly, right? Mm. But Whoopi says oh, yeah. this much more egregious thing, and it's like just a slap on the wrist, a two-week suspension. Please. I, I, I don't believe you guys. I just don't believe you. Uh, refer- like, who are they friends, these people? You, you know, who has friendships where you absolutely agree with your mates the whole time? What sort mm-hmm. of life is that? What kind of life well, Like, what sort of life is where you don't get right. pushback? But I guess that's why celebrities go nuts, right? A lot of the time, they all, don't hear no. All they do is they hear people uh, saying how wonderful they are the whole time. No, so 100%. This is, the, this is the, the world they live in. But anyway, all I can say is if we've learned anything out of this, it is that you should not be watching The View. You should not be listening to Neil Young and Barbara Streisand anyway. And everything else is kind of obvious to me. I mean, I, The View. Who's who's watching that show? Who's watching that hey, show? Jen Sue's on there now. I think I no. saw it on your Instagram so, story. <laughs> Jen Jen Sue uh, was on the set of the View, and she she sent uh, this very she put up this very funny video of where she's like standing in for Whoopi on the show. It was very convincing. A lot of people were actually like, "Wow, Jen Sue's going to be taking over from Whoopi. That's amazing." <laughs> I do love Jen though. She uh, she's always where the action is, and um, yeah. I'll I'll probably it's see funny. her. I'll probably see her when I'm in New York in March. All right. Lots of other things to get to, and we have much to talk about this morning, but I want to welcome uh, someone who's no stranger to the show, Sunil Osman. He's an MC, he's an actor, comedian, author, speaking coach, and now he's also a Reiki master. Hey, Sunil, what's happening? Sunil, can you hear us? Hello. Oh, Siri's just replied instead of Sunil. Now I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, to uh, cut Sunil off, and we see if we can't get him on. I think he must be experiencing load shedding wherever he is as well. Hmm. I'm a little suspicious, by the way. My um, don't be suspicious. No, don't I'll tell you be why. Suspicious. The the you you heard that hum in the background has gone away. The the yes. the UPS has switched off. Let me just check if my power's back on. Otherwise, we I'm I'm going to cut off like Sunil. Just give me a second. It, it's the <laughs> only country in the world, isn't it, where you're like, hmm, I'm suspicious. Ah. I've got power. <laughs> yeah, yes. it, it, yeah, I've got power back. It feels like it. Yeah. Uh, oh, I'm suspicious I've got power. I know. <laughs> yeah. That's exactly but right. Why wasn't I load shared during my right. st- my slot? Yeah. That Listen, was wrong. I, I sent I sent you you guys a photograph uh, or a video rather on our WhatsApp group. Um and it also explains the reason why I'm in a different setting today. No, this is not my new abode as oh. many of you suspected. What is the I'm setting? Actually, I had to, I had to flee my own home. Mm. Um uh, there was a surge at a power, st- a power station in my area, which caused things to blow up in people's homes oh, and on Jesus. people's properties. Um, my neighbor's pool pump almost set alight. The video I've sent you on WhatsApp is of a neighbor's gate motor, which was literally on fire. Uh, we were told to sh- shut off and unplug everything in our house because there was surges of high voltage oh action God. going on <laughs> and so at that point i thought i'm not going to take the risk and fall into a deep sleep tonight while my house burns down you, so I, you sent I came me, to a place of safety you sent me a video which i can't for some reason i can't save it and i can't play it back on on the system 
don't know why, but it's of a gate motor that's just caught fire. Yeah, I mean, I can perhaps show you here. No, show us on that. There we go. Just press play on that thing. Yeah, no, no, press it again. Oh, my God, no. You're, you're just missing why the button. Not? Yeah, there, there we go. Uh, anyway. No, hang on. Oh, boy. There we go. All right, so just show us. There's the there's the fire burning. No, oh, again, Diana. It. Sorry, it's not it's not working for you. Anyway, it's the, oh, it's not no. a, it's not exciting. It's just a, it's a gate this motor that's be... burning. That's all. Oh no! There we go. So is, the, is that because <laughs> that's because of a power surge? Yeah, it was huge. Um, I, I was outside when it happened, but you could actually smell you could smell the the, the wires in people's homes that that had burned. Wow. Um, I immediately went inside because my laptop was all hooked up, but everything seemed okay in my house. But it was pretty hectic. No. And then once they'd fixed the problem, um, we were allowed to turn on our lights, and then we had load shedding. So that was fun. Now, if you if you lost a piece of of, of expensive equipment, um, and many people would have, are you able mm-hmm. to sue Escom for that loss? Well, insurance, I'm sure, I would pay for it. I did think about that. But then the insurance company uh, should sue ESCOM. Yes, they should. Really? Because they're going to have to pay out a lot of money mm-hmm. for stuffed up expensive appliances see, and things like pool motors. Yeah, what we've got to do is we've got to ultimately make the, the people who work at ESCOM, who make the decisions, who've got us to this point, and especially those people who have left since then and who are who are living – normal lives you know like they've got away with it they're doing their own thing um probably le- leading very luxurious happy lives with all the money they've stolen those people must be sued in their personal capacity for every laptop that's burnt out for every computer that doesn't work anymore because of power surges for every gate motor then we'll sort this problem out really quickly <laughs> Anyway, yeah. All right, let's. Um, Why we... aren't parastatal books transparent to the country? What do you mean? It's, like, it's not a private company. No, mean, like I can understand it. why Adrian Gore doesn't show us his books, but you... why doesn't Escom just show us what's going on at all times? Um, like uh, outside of outside of what you're paying staff, different thing because they are what partly private, right? So parastatal is not all. Um, um, no, uh, I, mean, I think they they have to reveal all of their finances, but they do it to Parliament. Not to us. Uh, I suppose if you if you asked, you know, under the, I think there are, there there are laws that you you can request that information from them, but most people don't. Most well, people. then I feel safe because you know if Parliament's checking everything, then I know. Because <laughs> <laughs> you know you know what the comrades are like. Uh, uh, we yeah, sure. have undertaken right. an intense and uh, drawn out lengthy. The internal Plus investigation. Sita. Once that returns, <laughs> the results, those will be given to South Africans, green, black, blue, or pink, <laughs> in a democratic, in a way that oh, Nelson Holitla Mandela would have approved of. Right. So that's what they're going to do, right? We'll investigate ourselves and then, well, I mean, Parliament, come on. Um, there's an interesting show that's uh, on today, if you haven't heard it yet. Do you want to know more about business and leadership books, but you don't have the time to choose the right one. I mean, these, this is a category of books that everybody loves. Imagine if someone could do all the reading for you. Well, if you listen at 9 a.m. today, live, to Leadership Books <clears throat> Unpacked, uh, Manda Tsifularo and uh, Ngobile Ngobo have some of the best business and leadership books that you've always wanted to read, and they unpack them for you. They extract all the interesting insights and advance your leadership excellence without you having to go through the whole book. Now, doesn't that make sense to you? It's like an executive summary. Um, you don't have to read the whole damn thing yourself. These guys will help you do it. So go and listen to that show live today, 9 a.m. Let's see if we can get Sunil back on. Hey, Sunil, what's happening, man? Hey, what's up? Been a while. Oh, good. Been yeah. a while. <laughs> you eventually managed to connect. Have you also had load shedding? Uh, I thank goodness my load shedding is only happening later. So I was like, yes, I can make it the Cliff Central show at least. All right, good. How have you been? Um, let's just remind everybody. Sunil's been on the show a couple of times. He's been on various Cliff Central shows over the years. Um, we thought we'd catch up with him this morning. He's an MC, actor, comedian, author, speaking coach. And now I believe you're also a Reiki master. Yes, so the, the, the Reiki journey actually started about 20 years ago. I just never embraced it. 
Yeah. Um, and I embraced it a good four or five years ago, and now I'm all zen. <laughs> so what, what, is, what is Reiki? Uh, because Mbolelo has a, a bag of crystals there in the, in the studio, and he, he plays with those. What is Reiki? Yeah, no, Reiki doesn't involve any bags that look like you're holding crystal meth. <laughs> um, but it, it, it is, it is got, it's, it's a Japanese energy healing technique, which doesn't need require touch. So I've got clients in the UK, I've got clients in Zimbabwe, Australia. I can do WhatsApp video calls where or even Instagram video calls where I can do healing. So it's about energy techniques that you use to balance the chakras, clear the auras and just we are, as Reiki masters, we are the, the conduits to help you through healing and dealing processes. I do house cleansing. I went huh. to a house the other day. There was an evil spirit trapped there, so I no. actually was able to pull it out. And so it's a lot of energy work. What did you do with the evil spirit? This is interesting. Okay. I'm, I'm, yes. I'm going to be a lot less skeptical in, in the next uh, few years of my life because I love hearing these stories. So even if, you know, all those... Uh, super rational, super uh, reasonable people who, who don't like to hear any of the stuff that, that is slightly esoteric or metaphysical. I want to ignore that for yes. a little bit and just, just suspend disbelief. What do you do with an evil spirit in a house and where do you put it? Because if you just release it out into the wild, then it's going to go and find someone else to plague, isn't it? Yeah. So, I mean, I think perhaps using the word evil was incorrect um, because normally it's a, a trap or a, something that needs to be re released. So like I a come fart. in like and a fart. release it. You release it. So you, you send it out to what's called the violet flame. Oh. And you, you take it, you hold on to it, you, you release it with lots of love and um, you, you, you blow it out. Instead of pushing it onto somebody else, you're actually sending it out and releasing it. So it's more of a love because that's what we need. We need to release through love. All right, but how do you know a spirit is, um, is, is, is bad or good? Right. You know, how do you know it's bad or yeah. good? Because, I mean, so you don't like the word evil, but clearly this spirit was not doing anything good for the people in that house. So it was trapped in the house, but it was yes. also doing horrible things. Um, how do you judge yes. that? Do they tell you? Like this thing so, came and it pissed on me during the night or? <laughs> yeah, so it, it, it cuddled with me instead of my pillow kind of thing. <laughs> yeah. um, but actually what happens is you, you can actually, you just feel things are not right. So there's a, there's a level of energy that just, just drops. And sometimes there will be a, a lot of depression or arguments in the house. What happens to me is that they actually latch onto me and kind of beg me to please take them out of the situation. The, the spirit themselves says that too. How do you hear that? How does it sound? It, it's, it's a message you, you, it just, that just comes through. And my angels and guides have always been around me. I mean, only re recently have to actually go, can you please just stop talking right now? Okay, but what, what, so what do you, human experience. What do you hear though? Yeah. Like, how do you experience it? Explain it to me. Do, do you hear a voice like, Sunil, this is your angel guide? Or is it just a feeling you get? Is it just like a tingling on the back of the, of the neck? Is it, what, what kind of a feeling is this? Okay. So it is, it is not like a voice, oh, but it's actually more of a, it's a more of a, it's, it's a message that comes through that that's internal. So it's intuitive, but. No, that's the, the spirit guide dropping him out of the then, connection. Once the action, any, any different in many different forms. All right. So, so it could be a feather falling. Do so people... I would come to the studio now and say to you, yeah. Okay. Garrett, let me, let me feel your chakra. Let me feel stuff around you. I can actually literally am able to pick up okay. things around. Like first of all, yeah. first of all, you need to be touching my chakras. Thank you very much. We don't know each other that well, but I will say <laughs> this. Do people have to, do you clear out a bad spirit from a house. I'm sure there are yes. lots in my house and in um, Burlelo's house. I don't think Leanne cultivates bad spirits like we do. Now, if you come to my house, what are you going to charge me to clear out the bad spirits in my house? Okay, so I normally charge the minimum price is about a thousand five hundred. But I made a mistake once and went and quoted somebody a thousand five hundred and got to their house and it was this mansion that oh. required a lot more than just an hour. Oh, but even in that 
even in that case, it was like a, this is why I've been called here. This is my purpose right now. And this is, this is a big thing about what I've been going through in the past couple of years, embracing my actual purpose as an empath and a healer and all these things. But I, so I still went and did the house, even though it was this mansion. So, so I can do does, 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 well. does clearing out the bad spirits work like income tax? The bigger your house, the more it costs. The, the more it costs, to, to, the more yes. you have to pay tax. So you pay, you ba- basically pay Sunil a spirit tax for him to clear out the bad spirits. If you there live in a big go. house, it's more than a, if you live in a one room shack. Yeah, and it's do, a spirit do they... tax, but it's a spirit tax, but also it's, it's, it's an exchange. It's a trade exchange in that this is not just this lifetime that I've been working at this. Mm. I've been doing this for many, many lifetimes, and the journey itself, it's 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 an exchange. There has to be an exchange. Um, and it's about settling energy. It's about calming the energy. It's about making sure that people are feeling love, feeling all these things, which has have become so much more important in the past couple of years. And people are reflecting a lot more and requiring more of this kind of healing and guidance right. than ever before. Do you understand the spirits like you understand me now saying up, down, hot, cold? Like, is it that is it that tacit for you as an understanding? You said it was intuitive just now. H- how tacit is it? Do, do, like, for instance, so, so yeah, do you understand it like I'm speaking to you now? It, it, it's not always as clear. So what I would do is I would go into a meditation or a prayer to calm my energies down because I'm sometimes all over the place. And then I'll, I'll ask for guidance according to what I must do. For example, last night I did a Reiki treatment via an Instagram video call. And there was one point where I had to ground myself because I didn't know what else to do. And then you literally just listen and the messages come through on what to do. And then when I spoke to the person, that is exactly what they needed. So it's about trusting yourself as well. And you're doing things from a, from a place of truth. So it's not a matter of tick this, do this, do this, do this. It's a matter of sometimes just pausing, reflecting, asking for guidance. And the, the guidance is always there. Hmm. If you ask for it. And, and would you say the spirits are as sentient as we are? Because then there's the notion, it's like, no, bloody hell, I'm only unhappy because they won't change the channel to the cricket. Mm. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. what if it was just mm. that and it just feels yeah. to you like it's bad energy? It's like, no, put on is it ding? <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, so, well, sometimes it's, it, sometimes it, it, you see the energy world and the spiritual world and the spiritual realm is a lot faster than us. So they don't understand this human experience as much as we do because we are spiritual beings having human experience. So sometimes it is as easy as, you know what, take a left at this road instead of taking a right. Trust in that guidance. If you think about it, when you, when you, were, when you were younger and you had a headache, where did you put your hand? Hmm. That's a bit, of a, your, a bit of a rude, your rude question. We've all got we've all got healing abilities <laughs> within us, but social conditioning has taken us away from it. Okay, so all right. I'm I'm ha- I'm not I, aware. I, listen. I mean, you, you, I'm glad that you're doing this. And during uh, lockdown, a lot of people have had to do many different things. You're a, you're a multi talented person. I know you. You're funny. You're clever. You're interesting. You are entertaining. Uh, and and I I think you also have the spiritual side, which I didn't know about you before. What's the worst and most evil and most dangerous and deadly thing that you've encountered in the spiritual realm? What's the scariest thing you've seen or felt? The scariest thing I've seen or felt is when there is somebody that has got an attachment to a past person in their life to the point where it depresses them to the point of suicide. Jesus, and that happened? Uh, during lockdown, during the June of the first lockdown, yeah. So she couldn't release it. She couldn't just relax. She couldn't just let go of it. And it, and, and cutting the cord, when you cut this cord with the person, doesn't mean they're not going to be in your life. They will yeah. still be in your life. They will just not have the same right. effect. How but about, she couldn't release it to the point of suicide. How about this one from Rob? Rob wants to know, Sunil, I have friends with too many unwanted leeching family members in their house. Can you make them go poof too? <laughs> <laughs> so I can't make them go poof, but what I can do is reduce the effect <laughs> they will have I'll tell you on what, the leeching. I'd so. give you that <laughs> thousand, I'll give you 1,500 rand if you can make some people go poof. I'll fucking keep you on, <laughs> on retainer. <laughs> You'll be surprised how many people I've taken out of other people's lives just because you remove the attachment and the energy. All right. 
Someone said, is it possible for you to get rid of SARS? Like, can you, are you able to exorcise the South African <laughs> Revenue Service from people's lives? There's a very big part of me that wishes I could because I know. they refused to pay me out Jeez. last year. Oh, my God. <laughs> now, listen, if you ever figure that out, uh, then I'll hire you as well. All right, so, I mean, how was the lockdown for you? Because you, you are the kind of, you're a very social person. You like to be around people. Your job involved being around people, being out there. Was it really hard for you? It was extremely tough. Um, there was a lot of grounding and just reflecting that needed to happen. Hmm. Mentally, I was prepared preparing for lockdown two years before it happened because of my journey from, from a spiritual point of view. So I didn't mind being on my own. I quite liked being the extrovert that decided to become introvert. I had to run away to, to Cape Town because that's where my mother is because I'm in Johannesburg. So I had no work at all. No regular work at all. You know all. how many people had to move um, back in? Sunil, you know how many people had to move back in with their parents during lockdown? And it's, it's, to some people it's shameful and they're embarrassed about it. But, I mean, some people don't even have a parent to move back in with. Imagine how those people felt. Yeah, exactly, exactly. I mean, and, and you know, <clears throat> lockdown and lockdowns in general is an opportunity for people to just pause. We're in this mad world where we have to constantly be busy, 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 busy. But lockdown was an opportunity to pause. And I use that pause to do things like edit my book, for example. Yeah, you've written, um, a, you've written a book. What, tell us about the book. So... My book is called Sunny Motive. It is actually a journey that started about 10, 12 years ago, 2011. Yeah. Um, I used to go into a state of meditation or I'll meet somebody or I'll see a quote or something and then a deep thought would come to mind and I'll write it down and I'll tweet it mm -hmm. as a sunny motive. And this became a regular thing. And when I used to perform comedy, then my comedian friends used to say to me, oh, so what's the sunny motive for today, blah, blah, blah. They, they used to make fun you. of it. Yeah. And then at a later stage, people started saying to me, why didn't you put this into a book? Why didn't you put this into a book? So I put a book together with a whole lot of quotes, and hmm. I just left it. And I was like, this book is not ready yet. And then I edited it, and then I realized, um, especially after coming back to the country, that what I needed to do was to unpack the quotes. I can't just put a book out there with quotes. Yeah. So it went through about eight edits. It's been about 11 years of putting together. And during lockdown, my mother, my family, my editor, my publisher all came together and we put this book together. So what I've done is I've unpacked the quotes to a way where people can apply it to their life, love and business. Because the hardest, one of the harder things in life is to find a balance between making a living and having a life, kind of having find that balance. So some people concentrate just on what's, love. Um, some people concentrate just on that, you know? So what's going on in your life at the moment? Have, have, have you found love? Have you, have you got, uh, because you've got so many things going on. You've got so many plates spinning mm. in the air. What's happening in your life? Are you happy? Yes. Yeah, so I, I have, I found a lot of, a lot of love. I mean, I love, I literally love everybody that's here. It's a different kind of love. I'm not going to want to cuddle with you at night. Um, and I Again, have found if love you, if you sneak in, if you sneak into my house and start cuddling me at night, I have gu I have guns. I'm just warning you. <laughs> Re Reiki, I might come cuddle you tonight. Reiki master or not? Well, I'm getting out of town then. <laughs> but 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 you okay? So you 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 obviously have a lot of love to give. Um, you're one of those people yes. who's you know you 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 are you're extroverted, but you also give off uh, lots of energy, and you and you're a, you're a positive person. So I mean, how do the rest of us get there? So it is a, it's a lot about raising your awareness. Um, and funnily enough, that question is very nicely related to my book because I find a lot of people are going to my book that I have bought the book and they just turn to a page and they say they, they appreciate and, 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 and acknowledge their needs more than their wants. And there's a lot of reflecting. So the way you can get there is by acknowledging that your needs are satisfied and there's nothing wrong with wanting things, but to coming to a state of awareness where you're going you know what we are for example we are right. living in a 
crazy artificial world I'm, and you I'm, don't have to I'm going to have to I'm going to have to push back on something here there, there are two things okay. that I, I really don't and so this this whole thing about awareness I mean we've never been more aware of what's going on around us than we are at the moment there's so much information yeah. flowing in and out of our heads and in and out of our realities that it's almost impossible to keep up and I think it's probably a reason that so many people are depressed and miserable it's because they're too aware yeah. if they actually just focused yeah. on their family on their own house on their own problems on their job they'd probably be a lot happier but instead they're worrying about you know the politics of canada or they're worried about whether or not brexit's going to happen or they're worried about climate change all this shit that we don't need mm. to be worried about i think mm. awareness there's too much awareness if you ask me so that's my first yeah. argument my second argument is i don't have a lot of <laughs> I don't have a lot of interest in the spiritual realm compared to most people. Mm. I'm not saying I'm disinterested in it, but I've never walked into a place and gone, oh, feel a bad spirit here. And mm. you could sell me the most haunted house in the world, and I'd probably be fine with it. I'll buy it. And if you give me a reduced price because it's haunted, I'll, I'll be there even quicker. <laughs> you know, they always said that if you, if you, if you want to sell a, a haunted house, just sell it to an atheist or an agnostic yeah. or a non-believer because they, <laughs> they don't give a shit about that stuff. So how come it matters so much to some people and it matters so little to others? All this stuff around spirituality okay. and, you know, the, the idea that, that everybody needs to you, – you also said one other thing I'm going to pick, you, pick a bone with you on is, is what you need as opposed to what you want. I think the need stuff is the pathological stuff. Like if you're chasing the things you need all the time, I need this person in my life. I need spiritual, uh, you know, enlightenment. I need to feel wanted. I need to f have a cup of tea. That to me is dangerous. It's the want stuff that's good. You know, I want to have a happy life. I don't need to have a. I want to have a happy relationship. I want to have eggs for breakfast. Need mm -hmm. is like if I don't get it, it's going to be bad. Yeah. Am I just understanding so, so, these words differently to you? I, I think you are understanding it slightly differently because for the awareness side of things, what scares people is when the reality of who they are and what they are doing with their lives sometimes hits them. So we're living in a – it's very hard, and Gareth, you understand this, it's very hard to be real in an artificial world. Um, and – when the reality, when especially during lockdown and when people are on their own, they, they go, oh, hang on, without my car and without my money, and without this, this is who I really am. And that is what scares people. And I, I firmly believe that that is what's bringing people down into depression as well, because they're going, who am I really? Where did I lose myself along the way? So that awareness does scare people because you would rather be a person that posts 20,000 things on social media and pretend to be something you're not. And then when you're suddenly sitting on your bed on your own and you have this awakening, this awareness, you're like, oh, my gosh, okay. I don't like this wife but or husband I've been married to for 15 years. What's happening? Did you... And then when it comes to the, need, when yeah, it comes yeah, to the needs, mm -hmm. when it comes to the needs, it's, it's, it's about acknowledging that, you know what, I've got a roof over my head. Yes, I want a massive mansion, but my, my needs have been satisfied to this point. And there's nothing wrong with wanting things, Jeepers. We all want things. We all mm. want things. Yeah. But when you acknowledge that your needs have been satisfied, when those wants come into your life or when you earn and you work your, your butt off to get those wants, the appreciation is a lot greater. Yeah, you've made no progress with me. I'm sorry. <laughs> you, oh, my gosh, do you, do you agree, um, <laughs> Mbulelo, Leanne? I mean, what, what, do you, what do you feel about this stuff? I, for, for me... Um, you know, I've, I've always found it, I am more along the lines of, um, agnostic and, um, atheist and not believing in anything spiritual. Um, however, sometimes I have these things thrown my way, which seem to be serendipitous. Um, but I just think that however anybody needs to find some way of releasing stress, tension, um, a perceived um, ill spirit around them. You, you, you use you use drinking and masturbation, right? Those are your two. <laughs> <laughs> Those and yes, definitely. Um, and science me medication, yes, um, which is something else, that, something that some other people don't believe in. Mm -hmm. But I think it's more harmful to not have some sort of release in a oh, way that definitely. you trust and believe than to just sit there and do nothing. No, I mean. 
this is this is why I like having you know people with different opinions on here, and Sunil is one of those people. And I'm, I have no doubt that when you go and you take a bad spirit out of someone's house, that it does make them feel better, and it does improve their lives. Yeah. I, that that's indisputable to me. How it all happens is where you and I might disagree. And you know what? There's a space for all of it. I'm not going to say you're yes. you're wrong and I'm right and lord it over you. And similarly, you're not going to say to me. You're an ignorant idiot, and I can't have a conversation with you. We've got to be able to do both. Yeah, exactly. What do you and, say? And I, quite like, I but, quite like the drinking and masturbation, by the yeah, way. Yeah, that's also a good way. <laughs> sure. I mean, that's so Leanne's tools are, are drinking and masturbation. Bolello runs from his problems. Uh, so mm. he just hits the road, and then, he, you know, he, the further he runs, the, the, the more of his problems he leaves on the road behind him. Am I right, um, Bolello? That's good. Yeah. Oh. That's always been my thing is I can outrun my problems. Yes. It's a big part of me staying in shape. So absolutely. I, I, that's, I intend to do that till I'm about 50 and then mm. obviously my knees will hurt too much. I guess <clears throat> for me, as much as I, uh, so Sunil, uh, I, I don't agree with anything you've said and that's fine because <laughs> you, you know, for me, it's whatever makes people feel okay. I treat it like religion. Don't bring it into my life. As long as it's not in my school where I can't measure it, as long as you're doing it with your own money and it doesn't come into my life, mm-hmm. I guess have at it. So what do you, you know, what, I don't, I, it doesn't. What do you think my uh, coping mechanism is? If Leanne's is masturbation and, and alcohol and, and Bolelos is running from his problems, do you think mine is, is, is like uh, arguing with people and, and uh, being, being obstinate and difficult? Or do you think it's, do you think I'm also a, building a castle? No, you, your, yours is building a castle. Get, get a lot of stuff around me. And it's, I, it's, and it's yeah. almost like I'm in a fort. And I've got a lot of hobbies. Uh, so I, I channel yeah. my energy into those. But Sunil, you've known me for a while. Do you think I'm evolving or do you think I'm stuck? I think that people don't appreciate you for who you are. Oh. And what you and in your level of intelligence, because you speak from a different level of consciousness to many other people. Because some people's levels are they are stuck in a certain method, a certain way, and they don't see things from your perspective. And all you do is you try and give your perspective, which is actually at a higher level of consciousness, aye, aye, which aye. some people will never understand. Do you think that's a good thing? And that is not your problem. Right. It's their problem. All right. Well, listen, dude, it's always good to see you. And I'm, next time, uh, I know we had problems connecting with you right in the beginning, but next time let's get you on for longer and you just shoot the breeze with us and talk some nonsense. We've always got time for Absolutely. you. It's good to see you, Sunil. You too. Cheers, my bro. Bye-bye. There's Sunil Osman joining us this Friday morning. And now, dun da 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 here's Borge, George mm-hmm. Meany. Hey, Gareth. Hey, George, what's happening, man? Ah, oh, um, well, in the world of the UK, uh, they caught a man that was um, driving without a license for more than, uh, well, all his adult life since the age of 12, and he's in his 80s. Um, <laughs> so, oh, uh, George, I'm, I'm He's so, just been shooting the breeze. George, <laughs> I'm going to ask you, because this came up on our, on our show on, I think, Wednesday or Thursday. It could have even been yesterday with Pumi. And we were talking about these, the, the, the driver's licenses and you know, that machine that they've suddenly mm. fixed. And now that now the machine is working again, there's a part of me that really wants to comply with the law because I know like if I bump the car or whatever, they're going to be insurance things and they're going to try and repudiate the claim because I don't have a battered license. Why do we have this system in South Africa where every five years we have to get a new card, even though we probably drive exactly the same way? Is that standard? Uh, and I don't know if you know this off the top of your head, you might have to do some research on it, but are we the only country that every five years has to pay for a new card, even though our license is still valid? Yeah, I, I mean, I, I don't know what the other countries do in terms of driver's license cards, but I, I, I wonder what the logic is. It's a good question to answer. The only mm-hmm. logic I can think of is maybe as you age, your picture has to change. But with the online world, you don't need that anymore because all we should really have is a card with maybe a QR code. Uh, The cop stops, he has his device with him, he scans the QR code, he gets a visual of your license and your your picture can change over time. So so I think think it's a case of just, you know, governments and authorities don't keep up with uh, uh, with consumer... um, digital kind of the, the world and the way it's going. I just think it's so dumb that we, it, we have but, to keep going to go and get this card every five years. And Well, and, in today's world, yes. I mean, it's just... Yeah, uh, but don't, isn't that accompanied by an eye test? 
Uh, yeah, but uh, I think Gareth's talking about actually changing the card and yeah. you know, getting okay. a, a renewed license—a okay. different story. Uh, I mean, yeah. it's just—it's just dumb. And frankly, I mean, in, in a you know country where you could probably buy your license, and trust me, I've looked into that as well. I've decided not to go the illegal route, <laughs> so I'm actually going to go and do this. And I've uh, you know I found a, a business that does the—they book the appointment for you and all of that stuff. But it's such a pain in the ass, and it's all just admin and bureaucracy. Mm. It makes you almost want to break the law. I, I I hate to say this, but you kind of go, well, I'll just drive around without a license. I've been doing it anyway for the last two years. Uh, I mean, you know, I, I think the, the, with the current debacle going on with this machine that's broken, and huh. <clears throat> I would imagine that there are a plethora of people that don't have licenses on the road now. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> yeah, like they're not just driving. You know, they just couldn't be bothered. And when you see like Fikil Mbalula on TV mm -hmm. and you're like, really, this is the guy who's in charge of making sure that we all have some kind of regulation that saves more lives on the road or whatever. I look at him and I go, you couldn't save yourself if I threw you in a shallow river. And you're going to tell me that, <laughs> that the, you, you have the interests of ordinary motorists at, oh, please, the Minister of Transport. I mean, I know, I know 10... Of, of Carl, my dog's friends, who could probably do a better job in the portfolio of transport than than Fikile Mbalula, and I can't. I, I'm I'm really struggling, George, to make it a priority in my life to get this license renewed. I'm struggling, man. <laughs> yeah, uh, you know, uh, in today's kind of world in South Africa, where it's very difficult to uh, uh, to 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 do, I, it's understandable. It doesn't no. it doesn't mean the law is not there, though. And that, no, no. that I think is no, no. Uh, is the difference. Is you know, if you do get caught, there are consequences. Oh, no. um, <clears throat> you know, so you got to. Are you going to take that risk? Do you want to take that risk? Um, no, I've got to do it. I got to do it. You know, so. So sometimes, unfortunately, you know, we've got to do what we've got to do. Right. Okay. So this old dude had been driving without a license for all these years. Did he have to pay a huge fine or did they just let him go? So the, the, the authorities aren't, um, you know, disclosing what they're doing with the man, but they did say that he had never had an accident. He'd never caused an injury. He had never made anyone lose any, anything financially and he'd never mm. hit anybody while uninsured because, you know, in order to get insurance, you need a license. So, um, and that's another thing, I suppose. If you do decide not to get a license, there are repercussions from an insurance, finance, a uh, whole bunch sure. of things, which you've got to kind of I right. think about. But, uh, but, but he had never done anything in his, he was driving since the age of 12, apparently, for 70 years right. without a license. So then there's a, there's a <clears throat> cautionary tale. Obviously, you know, he was very lucky to not have got into trouble over those 70 years. But it does show you, you don't actually have to comply with the law as long as you don't do something stupid on the road you need to be concentrating really carefully every time you're behind the wheel but shouldn't that be the rule anyway we had too many roadblocks to get away with something like that hmm it's probably true yeah, yeah probably true all right so i mean let's not take this old man's example let's just try to yeah. comply all right and uh, then a man um, is suing Mercedes Benz after his thumb was guillotined off by the by the car's door. Okay, <laughs> so now it's not. This is not just a regular slamming of the door and um, <clears throat> and cutting your finger off. Mm -hmm. I'm not. A, I'm not sure if you're familiar with the Mercedes Benz, and a couple of other cars have it as well. It's called the soft close mechanism. So if you just touch the car onto the lock mechanism, it pulls the door into the frame. Nice. And it, uh, it closes the door for you. Um, all of the Mercedes Benz electric cars now come with soft close. Mm -hmm. So he was standing with his back uh, facing the car and his hand leaning in the door frame, and uh, the car decided to pull the door in. Um, and lock and uh, guillotined his finger off. I don't have a problem. Oh. I don't have a problem with that. I like this soft close situation. <laughs> I'm, I'm driving uh, one of, of Phil from DeWitt Motors' new uh, C-Class Mercedes. This thing is so high tech. It's so beautiful. You get into it, you just feel like you're, you're in a spaceship. And if some moron gets his thumb in the way of the door, I think he deserves to have that guillotined off. I don't think he should be able to sue Mercedes. Sorry. 
Well, Gareth, of course you're going to defend him. You once cut your finger off trying to cut an avo. So yes, exactly. you, uh, you, no. you're going to be... <laughs> yeah. I'm not defending the idiot. More, more no, than no. once. No, no, no. Yeah, more than... Actually... Habitual offender. Yes, but actually I'm not defending the guy who almost had his finger cut off. I'm defending Mercedes-Benz. I'm saying I was stupid when I cut my finger with the avo mm. knife, right? This guy was stupid to put his finger in the door, dummy. In other well, words, I you're mean, not going to sue avos. No. <laughs> or the knife avos. company. Yeah, all those um, avos. They've got so much money hidden away, those avos. Those sneaky, slippery little seeds. <laughs> yeah, big avo. We, you've got to look out for them. Got to big, avo for is... big, big avo. It's a big <laughs> part of the economy, yeah. <laughs> uh, um, and then, Gav, uh, Gareth, the uh, Slovakian Transport uh, uh, Department has uh, approved this flying car. Which one? Let me see. Let me see a picture of this. This flying car has been approved by the Slovaks, and uh, um, it is uh, it is now. It had to do over two hundred hours of flying, and uh, uh, you know, George, I uh, can't sorry, I can't see the car. Why don't you just send me the link, and I'll put it up. Let me send you the link. Yeah, oh, that's. Uh, I want to see this because I've been looking. You know, George, since I've known you, we've been talking about flying mm-hmm. cars, and mm-hmm. and Leanne, even before I knew you, George. Leanne knew that flying cars, that's the one thing that I'm most excited about. The moment I can get into a car and then also take off into the air, oh, that'll be the exciting, the most exciting day of my life. So the Slovakian Transport Authority has uh, approved that car for airworthiness. It's called the Air Car, yes. and powered by a BMW 1.6 liter engine, can do 170 nice. kilometers an hour and fly a distance of 1,000 oh, kilometers. That's fantastic. All right, let me see if I can. I love like the look of this one. Because it's very sexy. Here it is. Let me put flying it car can sometimes pass as like a little helicopter looking thing. We've seen mm. those before, like a tiny capsule, but this looks like a flying it's car. Awesome. But it takes up more than one lane on the road. That's the problem. Jeez, like. Well, <laughs> well the, 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 the wings do fold back. Oh, so uh, okay. it, takes, it takes three minutes, apparently, to, uh, um, to fold the wings forward mm. and fold the wings back again. Um, and if you just go down to the next picture, you'll see it on the road there, Gareth, uh, um, if, uh, if you Let scroll down on that picture. Let me another picture of this. Um, and it does, it, it, it folds back. So, yes, it would take up two lanes if, uh, if the wings were out. But okay. it, actually, it actually looks pretty cool. It doesn't look too bad, but, it, but I still think we can improve this design. I'm, I'm thinking more of like a Star Wars, you know. I, I know that I've got high standards here, but th- these guys have been messing yeah, us around. Is. They've been telling us for ages now that they would make this very sexy car. I've been waiting. I don't want to get old, and I'm already kind of old, before I get my Sky Car. Bring it on. Like, th- this is the best you can do? That's what it is? Yeah, okay, yeah I, I we, mean, it is a bit crude, but, uh, but at least it's better. a start, and that's the, uh, that's the main thing. I All suppose. right. Yes. I, look, I, George, I'll take it. Exactly. I'll take it. All right. <laughs> and then finally, um, you know, the Audi e-tron is here. Um, and uh, Audi have uh, partnered with Grid Cars to uh, increase the um, electric charges, electric car charges in the country and uh, right. increase their capacity. So we're going to get uh, even more charges in the country thanks to Audi in the coming, uh, coming months, uh, thanks to Audi and Grid Cars. And uh, they promise to be able to charge your car uh, up to 90% within 30 minutes. Right. That's very impressive. So the e-tron is their their electric car, right? Just so that those yes, no, nobody's electric car. You you talk about these things because you t- talk about them every day, George. But um, exactly. many of us don't know what an e-tron is. I was on Auto Trader the other day, George, um, because this is my new favorite thing to do: is to just go on there and Google or or, or search on Auto Trader all kinds of really sexy cars and see how many of them I can't afford. It's a fun game I play. It's a fun game that you can play. You've got to, Love you it. know, the, the, the ones that one can really can't afford, um, sure. you know, is for like 99.9% of us. Mm. And that is the ones that are marked POA, yes, which is pro- price on application. I noticed some of those, yes. Mm. Yes, so uh, those are uh, th- th- those ones. I mean, the reason that uh, that they put up the POA on uh, on Auto Trader is is because those prices change all the time. It's not like the price stays the same. Yeah. Um, and the cars are often rare, so they appreciate or might even depreciate. So you have to apply to to get the price. I love that. When I see POA, I'm always like, oh, one day I'll be rich enough to actually go. Hi, I'm actually asking for that price now. Hello. 
Tell me. So I find I've I've always wondered how mm. much nicer the salesmen are to the people who call for that. Oh, like yeah. like whenever I see POA, I'm always like, I wonder if George's guys are gonna say, Sir, where are you? A foot rub is coming, you know what I mean? If you need a Reiki healing, yes. no problem, I got you. Sure. <laughs> I, I saw this one, uh, George. I, this is still the car I want more than anything else. This um, this Merc GT. Look at that thing. Oh, Jesus! That's very cool. I, I I got so excited about that. I made it my wallpaper on my laptop. Hmm. That is that that, that, that is. Uh, I think uh, from That's Mercedes nice Benz, it's one of the sexiest cars. There, it's the it, dude, I, George. I haven't like felt this way about a car in years because I stopped being interested in cars. Really. Uh, and I I, I, yeah. I I drove one of those when I went for that um that day on the track at uh, at Swartkop here with uh, Phil and and his team. And we were driving all kinds of cars, but that GT, oh my God, I fell in love again, and now I've been kind of obsessed. I'm I'm a bit of a of a GT stalker on Auto Trader. If you go and look up who's been, if you because you could see the back end, right? If you look at the yeah. ISP that's been looking up all the GTs on Auto Trader, you'll see it's me every every week. I'm there. <laughs> it's probably Gareth. You, it's me. Uh, you, uh, you know you can marry objects these days. I'm right? I'm ready. I'm ready. If 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 a GT <laughs> will just have me, I'll have it as well. What a great! I think car. I think one of the one of the sexiest GTs is still. I think it's the 2012 model. Um, I, I I still like that particular GT the most. I think mm. it's the 2012 model. There's there's oh, one of them that uh, I, I'm not just, even. It just. I'm not timeless. even picky about the year, George. I, they're just all. I mean, they've they've brought out a 2021, which is. I, I start drooling when I look at this goddamn thing. <laughs> they, they they are very nice. Uh, I uh, I must agree with you. And they're rear wheel drive, which means you can go sideways. Mm, such a great car. Anyway, so that's my uh, that's my admission, my guilty admission. I've been secretly late at night going onto Auto Trader and looking up these cars. Mm. Sorry, what can I tell you? Oh, I see. You, you're the one that late yeah. at night. Yeah. <laughs> Very embarrassing. Crashing the website, yeah. Right. <laughs> you're, the one, you're the one that, uh, you know, when the, when, the, when the software engineers say, there's still someone on our site. We can't do this update. Oh, um, it's me at three yeah. in the morning. Yeah, that's me. He, he seems to be on for seven minutes every time. <laughs> <laughs> yes, all right. Yes, all right. Vroom, vroom, baby. All right. What else you got for us, George? Uh, that's, uh, that's it, Gareth, for this week. Right. Very good, everybody. Have a happy weekend, and we will see you on Monday, bright and early at 6 o'clock. Be good. Cheers.